All right, we're back in action. We're going to get into these acoustic guitars, uh, the rhythmic elements, and we're going to start bringing those in. And, um, you know, the idea is to accentuate the vocals at all times. Every song or majority of songs are going to be vocal centric. Probably the most important part of most records. Uh, also, you got to realize like this is this song is telling a story. We never want anything to step on the story. Uh, this is a story about the legend of the Squatch, right? So, um, you know, uh, a Squatch that lives out in the forest and and grows weed and and has the seeds, the weed seeds and everything, and uh, you know makes hybrid strains and all that. So it's it's kind of a fun little story. So we have to make sure that it's fun and it has that energy in it, and we're not stepping on the vocal, we're not stepping on the storytelling. We need this to really be dialed in. The record needs to be about the story. It needs to be about that funk too, that groove that's happening uh, along the way. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the rhythmic elements here. And a lot of the times I just read the waveforms, right? So I'll look at like here and I can see the waveforms are pretty, you know, rhythmic. It's going the whole time. Um, and then same thing here on these guitars. So you can see guitar Royer uh, 57, Beta 57, and then a 421. And then you got uh, these acoustic guitars here, all right? And then I can see that there is, yeah, there's like something here that may look like a lead guitar or something, or maybe it's just filling up some stuff. It says clean chunk. So I don't know what that is, but it sound, it looks like it's gonna be a rhythm guitar. Um, we have the vocals in, we have the bass in, we got the drums in, the drum kit, we got the background vocals in. Um, I'm gonna find a spot where these acoustic guitars are really playing. And it looks like they're really loud towards the end on the outro. Um, but let's find maybe verse two. And we'll start popping these acoustics in. I got an acoustic bus going into my instrument mix bus. Uh, the first thing I probably want to do is unmute the acoustic bus. And then I have an R122. Um, I don't know what that really is. It could be like a ribbon mic, you know, like a Royer. Um, and then I got a R121 which I always love. And then it looks like a JC12. So it looks like you got an amp there and then another amp here. So let's start with these guys and you can see they're panned 60, 60. Um, and we're gonna just kind of listen to these and pop them in the mix. See how they sound. Uh, flood waters, rock slide. Let her know where you're at. 36, 101, red woods attack. You gotta stay on the road in your bed. That's a sea squash trap The all aboard come along to the back of the woods I'm the song and sing along, it'll be all good Uh, uh, flood waters, rock slide Let it So right away, that pair is creating a really weird like polling of the phantom image in the stereo. So you have like this right one and then you put in the left one and it still sounds like it's skewing to the right. So that's something to pay attention to. Just checking these out, soloing them out. Uh, next thing I noticed right away is that this pair here um, has kind of a lot of like too much boxiness in it. It sounds really boxy. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to carve this a little bit um, very simply, you know, by using my, you know, my favorite. Uh, but, you know, I'll actually use a different plugin for you because, uh, you know, I want to show you different stuff that I use. I don't always just use the Pro Q3, um, but it is a great EQ for getting rid of stuff. Um, I also like the, um, the Massenberg. Let me see. I can't, I don't, I don't remember what it actually is called, M -W, MDW or something. Um, <clears throat> it's Universal Audio. So let's find that one. I think that's a really great EQ as well, especially for cutting. A lot of people love this one. I do specifically. Okay, so this one's great. Uh, Massenberg De Designs, kind of a GML style EQ, which is really clean. Um, one thing I like to do is just high pass everything with a... Um, with a 12 octave and then for guitars like especially if they're rhythm guitars 
just bring them all the way up, like maybe 150, 180. Sometimes I'll even go all the way up to 300, right? Uh, and then this is really where I'm going to be um, looking around, you know, this this low mid band. Uh, so let's mute, unmute. Uh, let's listen to this soloed out, just this acoustic, which is panned to the left. And we'll try to find that frequency. So just doing that just clears it up so nicely. And then I'm not going to really take anything else out with this EQ, but I'm going to apply it to the other guitar as well um, that's in this group. And then I'm going to pan this one left and that one right again. I'll probably go like a little wider than what he had. So maybe do like 64, 64, something like that. Um, you can also d hold down command while you uh, hold any, like hold down command, you click and then you hold down command and then you can move any value, like volume, pan, whatever, and it's going to use a, a, a tighter, you know, it'll move it a lot slower basically. So you can get more precise. All right, so that's cool for me. Uh, the next thing I really want to do is I want to treat this acoustic bus with uh, some compression, just something to tie them together. Uh, something like... You know what I'm what I have in my head right away was like a uh, was a Neve um, thirty three six oh nine. So I'm gonna go pop that guy in there, and I think this is a really good compressor at keeping the transients. You know, it's fast enough. Um, it's a really really nice uh, compressor for acoustic guitars, pianos, stuff like that. But um, sometimes I'll just use like for example, I'll use like a mix bus um, preset. You know. Um, here we go. We'll just mix bus snappy, right? And then I'll look at this and make sure that the attack is at slow and that we are just doing just a little bit of compression just to tie things together and glue it. But let's hear this and adjust the compressor here. And then the next thing I like to do um, is probably just overall, we don't want anything really fighting that vocal range and we don't want anything too tinny sounding. Like I hate like tinny sounding strings, you know, anything that's like 2K, you know, that, that like, yeah, you'll get what I'm saying. And then I'm going to probably use some sort of like Neve EQ to make things just, you know, glisten a little more. I might use like a tube tech. Um, I got another, you know, really cool uh, idea for it as well, but. Let's try uh, just getting rid of some of this tinny stuff in here.
So that's doing exactly what I want it to do. I'm uh, getting a little more honk and, and box out of it. it. Looks like 446 or so. And then I'm just taming this 2K area. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to give it just kind of like some, uh, some gloss on the top. Right, so uh, a great plugin for that obviously is like a Poltec EQ P1A. Obviously, that's like a very used tool. Um, but what I've been really digging lately is this Slate Digital. I'll show you. Oh, not the compressor rack. Oops. No more compression. I like to keep the acoustics pretty open, by the way. I don't like to compress acoustics really hard unless it's like a very pop record and it needs like super hyper compressed acoustic guitars but um i'm looking for the mix rack here you can also oh here it is so fresh air is, is like this new plugin uh that they released not too long ago but um i'm just gonna put like a little bit of gliss you know you could check both of these but there's a mid air and a high air and i'll just uh i'll show you what i'm gonna do here I'm trying to get some of that sparkle at the top of the harmonics I mean, how does that not just do exactly what I was wanting it to do? You know, like, I just love that plugin. It's so good. So good job over there. I think, like, Fabrice, uh, the designer, made that. But uh, so we're, there we go. Those acoustics are sounding great to me. Let's pop them in the mix. And let's mute these other ones still so we can just hear these ones. Let her know where you're at. 36 101 Red Woods attack. You gotta stay on the road when you're paying the black. Those people flying off the edge just like Tuesday's a cat. Then you should up, take a second, don't forget where you're at. I don't get caught in your tip, that's a C squad trap. The all aboard, come along to the back of the woods. I'm the song and sing along, it'll be all good. Great. Sounding incredible. I love it. And uh, another thing I want to do probably with these guitars is I want to send them to an acoustic guitar uh, um, verb because I do want some verb on them. They sound a little too upfront and a little too competitive with the vocals. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to send them to a, uh, a new bus here. So let's go new track like we usually do and we'll call this acoustic verb. You notice I haven't put the other guitars in yet. You know, I'm trying to dial in these guitars. Uh, when you got two stacks, two, you know, two doubles of guitars, you just need to dial in one really well, right? Get that sound because that's the rhythm guitar. And then that other stack, which I know is wider, is going to be more of like, uh, you know, just a widening effect on the acoustic guitars. It's going to give it more dimension. So I'm not like too concerned with like, oh, I got to get both of those guitars perfect right now. I want to be thinking about the mix, not not uh, so much like the individual elements, right? So that's what I'm constantly doing. And when you see me solo, it's just so that you guys can hear stuff and you guys can hear what I'm trying to do and how I'm shaping things. Um, but I, I typically don't solo very much. It's not something that I, uh, I like to do. So this needs to go to the instrument bus, the all instruments, um, because we don't want it to be going through any sort of mix uh, bus compression or anything. So all instrument bus. And then now we'll start to send a little bit of this verb here. And something maybe I would start with for an acoustic, which I think is incredible on acoustic, is um, the AKG uh, spring reverb here. I think it's AKG, yeah. The AKG BX20. This is just like, it just like hugs, gives like a feeling of space. It's an incredible reverb. I, I just love it on acoustic guitars. I don't love it on everything, but uh, acoustics, it just, it really makes things sound three-dimensional. 
it makes things it gives things uh the guitar space it gives it this really beautiful like hugs the space so um let's go with uh something that probably is like made for guitar um and we'll go pretty tight on it as well so there we go jacqua uh king hopefully i'm not butchering his name but uh you know a great great mix engineer um he's got a little preset here for acoustic guitar and this is in mono. I'm actually going to turn it to stereo just because uh, I want a stereo verb. I just want a little more width. And then what I'm going to do is take the bass down a little bit more and we're going to go wet solo on that. That's good. And then typically I find spring reverbs and plate reverbs have way too much bass. That's why I, uh, I have that in there, but I'll just low cut right away. And let's just hear this. Let's start uh, putting some of this in and I'll solo it so you guys can really hear the uh, the verb here. So, solo our acoustic buses. Now let's hear it. That sounds incredible to me. It really like gave dimension to the track instantly, right? And those acoustics are really starting to shine as a rhythm instrument. And they're starting to sit in the mix. You know, that's that's really the important thing about mixing is that everything has its place and knows its place. Um, that's what we're hired for. That's why people pay me the big bucks. <laughs> nah, you don't get paid much as a mixing engineer just because you always spend so much time on a mix. Um, so now let's go into adding these other guys, the, uh, bigger stereo stuff on the acoustics. And the first thing I'm probably going to do is just solo them out and make sure that we're just getting kind of bright top stuff. I don't really want anything else to compete. I don't want any low stuff in these guitars at all. So let's hear them. There's definitely some phase issue here. I'm not really sure what it is, but I don't like it. <laughs> it definitely is like not right. The recording, the the way it's like spread out. I might even just use one of these um, if I can't fix it, but it definitely sounds phasey. So the first thing I'm gonna obviously do is just go and try to flip the phase on it. So I'm gonna go 550B and just hit the phase polarization flip. So uh, let's see what that does. And if that doesn't do it, then um, we might just use one of these tracks because it definitely has a weird stereo image, which definitely, it just tells me that they're, they're out of phase with each other a little bit. So I have a really cool tool that um, I don't typically pull out, but uh, you know, something to give a give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna match these first of all, four six four six, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a first. I'm gonna look at what's going on because this is like something weird here. If you just zoom way in on the waveform, you can see that they're like they're out of phase, right? Like they're phasey. See this waveform coming up and this one kind of going down. Um, let's find a more transient heavy area. So, yeah, this doesn't look bad right here. This looks in phase. All right. But um, one thing I like to do, a little tool, is um, it's an audio suite tool and it's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like having a brain fart right now, but it's, I believe, let me see. Um, I'm going to find it, I promise. And, you know, I, I'm sure you hate watching stuff like this where someone's fumbling around looking for a plugin, but I'm actually going to find this uh, phase tool that's going to align everything, uh, auto-align. 
I'm looking for it. Auto align. I just always forget what the um what the company is. Here we go. So auto align post. Okay. So auto align post is an offline. It'll take basically the mics. Um, if the mics were out of phase, even if they were like in different areas and moving them around, it'll actually go and like phase align everything. So pretty cool. I'm going to leave it on uh, dynamic here, which means some, some stuff was moving around. And that could happen with acoustic, you know, when you're moving around and you're playing. Um, so it says to start, please select the reference track in the side uh, chain input menu. So we're going to go into the side chain and we're going to pick AC1 JC12. So go up here, AC1 uh, JC12, and then we're going to pick the bridge. Okay. So, and then, and then this says, then click preview or render, right? Um, I think I want to actually pick this one. So you highlight the, the one you're trying to align to, and then you go to the side chain and pick the one that you want to align to the selected one. I know it's so confusing. I'm sorry, but basically I'm selecting this one and I want the AC one JC 12 bridge to align to this one, right? So I'm going to pick that in the in the side chain and I'm going to make sure this one's highlighted. Okay. So now I can just hit render and it's going to, it's going to basically phase align everything. All right. So here it comes. Okay. So you can see here it says aligned. Um, and then you can see kind of like what it did. There's just like little, yeah, blue and red, you know, but let's see, let's see what it sounds like because we can totally undo that if it didn't do what we wanted to do. And you can see that says AT align P and then this one's the bridge. So actually it aligned to the bridge. So I had that backwards. Sorry, it's been a while since I used this tool. Um, but let's just hear that same position and play it. Okay, so matching the volumes a little bit helps, but there's still, I think the problem is, is that someone sweeped out everything that, you know, they need. And it's like really just like this top stuff. And I'll play it to show you that. Another thing is when instruments have like more of a frequency than the other instrument that you're panning, you're going to, it's going to poke out and catch things differently. So we might be able to EQ out some of the, um, some of the more, uh, you know, mid-range stuff out of this one um, to match it a little bit better. Yeah, things just sound really phasey. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to align this one to uh, this acoustic up here as well. So same thing. I'm going to just go into the other and auto align post. And then we're going to pick. Remember, we're going to align to whatever's in this key. So I want to align to the. Um, I'm going to align this one to the R, the AC1 R121. So we're going to pick the 121 in here, R121, and then we're going to make sure this one's selected, and then we're going to render this. And you can see that was pretty like out of phase right there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select this, um, this other one here, and we're going to align it to uh, the R121 as well. So now we have our doubles all aligned to the, the main one is the idea. Let me see this. So I think I'm doing this right. 
Yeah, line, auto align, auto align. Yep. Okay, so render. And the more red you see, the more it had to align. So let's listen to these together now. Like magic. Like it's just so much more centered and focused. And, you know, everything's like tight. You can just hear it. Uh, the low end came back as well, and there's no weird skewing of the of the mid range. So these guitars are now sounding really nice. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring these into the mix and make sure they're actually working in the mix. About the swatch and his beers I'm trying to make an honest living And be just like him I'm like a cabin in the woods With the lights and the sense You fuck with me You fuck with squatch And that's the way that it is The swatch is taking chances Crossing strains and breaking branches Popping seeds and growing trees And stopping avalanches He's starting trendy dances Using CBDs for curing cancers No one grows like he grows You might be smoking on his endo Those are working a lot nicer in the track now you can actually really hear them you hear the string attack and everything but that's the acoustics now we can start you know in the in the next module i'll get into uh, our next video i guess i'll get into bringing in these other guitars because i think these are electric guitars because you got beta 57s and 421s on it so it's probably you know an amp uh and we'll get into the electric guitars popping those in and you know, making everything fit around that. And then we'll start bringing in the percussion after we got all the rhythmic guitar elements down. So hopefully uh, that was cool. I think it's pretty cool. Sounds pretty good to me.